All right, everyone. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to draw one of the conch seashells. And so this seashell is the one that you actually put up to your ear and you can hear the ocean. So it's a fairly big and difficult seashell. It took me a couple of times to figure out how to break it down into shapes to make it easier for you to draw. And of course, that's what our goal is whenever we learn how to draw or start drawing from observation, is trying to break our images down and actually figure out what kind of shapes they form together. So in this video, we're gonna be using, of course, our number two pencil. Remember, I don't want you to be pushing too hard. In my video, I'm gonna be pushing really hard so that way everyone can see my actual lines that I'm making but I want you to be pushing very light. Okay, so our first step, we're going to draw a curved diagonal line across the middle of our paper. Make sure you do have enough space around your line so that way we can add to it and fill up that space when we draw our seashell. So this curved line is actually the angle guideline for which we want our seashell to, to move. Then we're going to draw a diagonal line across the center of this curved line. So this one here, you do want it to be fairly straight. It is just a guideline, so if it's not completely straight, don't worry. It does not have to be completely straight. Okay, so next we're going to be creating an eyeball type shape. Again, you want this line here in the center to have equal, side, equal amount of the line on each side. Then we're going to draw, of course, our eyeball shape. This is going to be on the right hand side here. So the bottom part of your eyeball shape, you want it to be less curved. So you want it to be shorter. It's not as wide. And then the top part, of course, we do want it to be a lot wider. So it should almost touch the end of your straight diagonal line. Okay. So make sure that your straight diagonal line is not halfway through your eyeball shape and that you do have these points here along the, the end. So it should almost look like a lemon. Okay. So now we're going to start actually focusing on the top portion of our seashell, so the top half. So we want it to have a spiral, so we're going to start off and break down our spiral into a circle. So starting at this point, not really a circle, more like an oval, egg kind of shape. So that's going to be the starting point of our spiral. And then we want our spiral to fall along this curved edge. So we're going to draw a guideline for our curve. So that way we follow our curve throughout our whole spiral. So starting here, this little point, we're going to draw a curved line all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to actually draw four different circles or egg-like shapes in a row. Notice how they are slightly overlapping. If they do not overlap, that's fine, but we do want to make sure that our ovals are following along on that curve that we have made. And so these ovals actually create the bumps to our spiral that give our, our seashell that seashell-like texture. Okay, so once we have our four circles that follow along that curve, we're going to create a line that connects the top of all of our ovals. So it's going to be a wavy line. And again, if you mess up a little bit, don't worry. You will be able to erase it and fix it when you draw with your marker. But try not to erase while you're drawing your sketch. So next we're going to draw a line that connects from the bottom to the top. It's going to be like a staircase because we want our spiral to continue up. So we're going to draw a line that curves slightly in and up and then a line that curves slightly down and up. And again, we want to follow that curve. So we're going to create our another curve here and this will essentially end up being the guideline for our second spiral, our second step. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so just like we did on that first guideline, we're gonna draw our four circles. Remember, we do want to follow along on that curve, so we want our circles to kind of curve up at an angle. And we want our circles to be slightly smaller, only because as our spiral gets up to our point, it will start to get smaller. So all of these circles should be slightly smaller than the circles before. Okay, and again, they don't have to overlap. And if you have these little gaps, don't worry about these little gaps. We can fix them in the end. Okay, and just like the first one, we need to draw our wavy line. So we're going to draw our wavy line that connects the top. Then if we make mistakes, don't worry, we can fix them later. Alright, so same thing as we did before with our first row of circles. You want to add this second step. So we're going to draw a curved line inward from the bottom circle and a curved line inward from the top circle. And again, remember, since it is a spiral and it does get smaller, you do want these steps to start getting smaller, these layers. So it should be thinner and not as wide. Okay, and again, now we have this curve for our guide. So we do our next layer of circles on that guideline. And of course, again, we want them to get slightly smaller and curve slightly up towards the top. And of course, again, we need to draw our wavy line that connects the top of them. Then we need our little spiral staircase. Curve down, curve up, and we connect it. And do notice how each of my little spiral staircase tops do end up getting smaller. So this next one, our circles are actually going to be on top of our guideline. And of course they are our smallest set of circles. Draw our wavy line. And then small little bump on the top. And for the point of our seashell, we're actually going to draw a teardrop or a leaf type shape. And that's the end for the top half of your seashell. So this bottom half actually is not as complicated. That's why I saved it for the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that oval as our opening for our seashell. So coming along the edge here, we wanna show where the inside of the seashell starts and ends. So we're gonna curve an extra line here along the bottom. Remember, it does not follow that first curved line. So this is going to be the connection between the opening flap and the left side flap. So we want to connect this corner here, but we don't want it to be completely gapped. So we're going to point it just a little bit more, extend it out. Now we're going to draw the bottom of our seashell. So the bottom's going to kind of curve up around your first little egg shape there. I'm gonna curve up and in slightly, not too much, and then you're gonna curve back down. Remember, you don't want it to be too thin. Okay, and then of course this last step, we're gonna draw the edge of our opening. So we're gonna curve our paper, our line in. We're gonna kind of curve it out to the tip of that outline and then we're gonna connect it all the way down to the bottom. So that's kind of what that little guideline there was for, is to help you give a little bit of a tip there. So it should almost look like a flap. So now we're done with our pencil. We can go ahead and put that aside and we'll get out our marker. I'm actually using a felt tip marker. So it's not exactly a marker, but it's not exactly a pen. So the tip of it is just felt like a marker, but it's 
thin like a pen. So my, my drawing, my marking will be thin. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna outline the lines that we want to keep. So I'm gonna start with this outside portion of our seashell. And then I'm going to come in and do the inside portion of the flap. Remember, we don't want to draw, trace every single line. We only want to trace the lines that we want to keep. So now I'm going to do the left side portion of the opening. Curve it up and around the first layer of my spiral. So I'm going to trace the wavy line on top of my circles and then of course around my circles and then back down to the bottom. Okay, and so we're not actually going to trace all of our circles at all. So what I want you to do is trace the outline first of this top portion. Okay, notice the little gap, I can fix it so it's not so gappy. Remember, do follow along with all the little bumps that you are or had made so that way you do have that outline and that texture of your seashell. It will look a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, trace, we don't wanna trace these lines just yet. We're gonna trace these wavy lines first So the top of our wavy line is actually the middle portion of the spiral that goes up our seashell. So now we're going to start tracing these guidelines here. We don't want to trace this bottom one here because it was just for our starter guideline, but we do want to trace the other ones to give us that dimension, that depth between, that separation between the first spiral and the second spiral and so on. So now we're actually done tracing the outline of our seashell. So get out a nice big eraser. It doesn't have to be a special eraser, just as long as you've got enough of it to erase the entire seashell. So you're gonna erase all of your pencil markings. Okay. And so since I did press really hard, when I started erasing my pencil markings, I actually, you could end up seeing still the pencil markings that I had made before because I did press so hard. And also keep in mind, when you press too hard, that you can't erase it. 